thank you for joining us at Understanding of the Father's Heart. I'm Evangelist and Teacher Joseph A. Brown. I want you to know we are blessed to be with you this day. But you know, most of all, what I'm very thankful for is that our Heavenly Father has allowed me to be able to share His holy and divine word in times like these. You know, dearly beloved, we are living in a time, in a day, where the Word of God is being so watered down. Uh, there are believers taking political camps and making up their minds, even against other believers. But there's no trust any longer. But dearly beloved, one thing I know for sure is that we can trust our God. He will never, ever fail us. You know, we have to come to a place where we are like the Word of God says in Hebrews. That they were searching for a place not made with hands, but a heavenly home. A place where man could not corrupt nor put his hand upon. This is what true, honest, born again believers ought to be searching for. For this world will pass away. The things of this world will pass away. This world cannot be fixed. It can only be fixed if we are willing to repent and turn back to the Lord. There's no Savior anywhere to be found on this earth. But we must turn back unto the Lord. And dearly beloved, that ought to be the cry of every born again believer. That we will turn unto the Lord. And give our hearts back to Him. And dearly beloved, only after that will the Lord then bless where we are at. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask by your divine spirit and your power. That Lord God, that you will give us an understanding of who you are and, and who we are in you as believers, Father. Father God, I ask that you touch everyone, Father, who will hear this message, Lord God. I pray, Father God, that you will speak to their hearts, Lord God, that they will grow closer to you. And those who do not know you from the pardon of their sins, draw them unto you, Father God. Allow them to know, Father God, of your greatness. Open their eyes that they might see that your Son is the only hope in this earth, Father. Father, we truly do thank you and praise you, Father God. And Father, I ask that you will give me spiritual understanding and insight in your word, even right now, by your holy and divine spirit. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. And praise be to the living God. Dearly beloved, what we want to share today, uh, the subject, the Lord's jewels the Lord's jewels do you realize that God himself had declared in his word that his people are his jewels glory be to God what a precious thing to know we are called sons of God we are called saints we are called the apple of his eyes we are called beloved and dearly beloved Glory be to God. We are also called Jews before the eyes of God. Dearly beloved, it's not because of who we are. It's not because we did anything to deserve to be called Jews or to be put upon the necklace of God. But rather, it is because of what Jesus Christ did at the cross. And the fact that he called us unto himself. You did not come to the Lord on your own. He called you according to his word. 
no man come to the Father but by the Son. So dearly beloved, if you are associated with a religion that says to you, that's all you have to do is confess in you by your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died, and that's enough. Well, according to God's word, it's not enough. And I must emphasize that point. Because when Paul wrote that to the Roman church, he was speaking to Jewish people who were set and bent on following still Moses. So it was difficult for them to accept Jesus Christ. But one thing about it was this, that they had a strong faith, a strong belief in what Moses said about the law and what they were practicing. They were strongly in belief. And Paul was trying to convince them and say to them, you have great faith. You are uh, 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 zealous toward what you believe. But the simple fact is, you were like I was. you believing wrong. It's okay to have strong faith. But your faith has to be directed in the right place. And that right place is in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they already had a very zealot way of seeking after God. But many times we simply say to people, that's all you got to do is believe in your heart and trust and confess with your mouth and that was enough. Well, dearly beloved, that formula was for those particular Jews because of what and the way they were believing. That is not for you and I today. We come to the kingdom of God because we were drawn by the Spirit of God. And we come to the kingdom of God because God has chosen us. We come to the kingdom of God because we have been born again. And when a person has to be told or asked, do you believe the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior? Do you believe that Jesus Christ came down here for your sins? And if you believe that, then you're saved. You just don't know that you're saved. Dear beloved, when one is saved, they know that they are saved. Because they have been born again. They have been transformed by the power of God and taken from the, uh, the kingdom of darkness into God's marvelous light. They know. Dearly beloved, they know that they have become a jewel in the necklace of God. It's like taking someone from a dark room and bringing them into the sunlight. And they say to you, well, there was no change. Everything is the same. Dearly beloved, there is a great change. And that person ought to know it without any doubt in their heart. But I want you to turn to Malachi, the third chapter and the 13th verse. And this is God speaking to the nation of Israel. He just spoke to them uh, uh, about the things that they were doing and how they were stiff-necked toward the things of God. And so God is speaking directly to the children of Israel at this time. And I believe that you and I as believers can also use this for our gain or getting a better understanding of how God perceives us and how we ought to perceive Him as a believer. In the 13th verse of the third chapter, it says, Your words have been stout. This is God speaking to the people of Israel. In other words, your words have been harsh against me, said the Lord. Yet, you say, what have we spoken so much against thee? The Lord says this, you have said 
it is vain to serve God. And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? They were questioning God. They were saying, why are we going through the things that we're going through as a nation if you're supposed to be our God? Why are we being attacked on every side? Why is there famine sometimes in the land? Why is there not enough of food for us to consume? Why is that so? Why is the rain not falling as it ought to fall? If you truly are God, then we are serving you in vain, is what they're saying. They're saying, we serve you in vain. Because what does it profit us to keep your ordinance? What does it profit us to walk mournfully before you? What does it profit us to fear you, God, before the Lord of hosts? Why should we do all these things? And yet we have trouble in our lives. This is their mindset at the time. Why should I serve you, Lord? I'm not really getting that which I thought I would get. So what is the purpose of me serving you? Now look what the 15 verse says. And now we call the proud happy. You know, I think about that statement. And I think about our country. And you know, it's amazing that we now call those who are very proud, egotistical, uh, self-centered, and we call them happy. You know, go to your magazine rack in any store, and it looks like everybody is smiling. Very proud. A very proud group. But all of the magazines literally have smiling faces on it. Dearly beloved. We're living in a world of fantasy. We're living in a world that, as we can say, is an alternative universe of what really is happening around us. The word says Jesus wept when he saw all what was happening when he came to planet Earth. Now we look at these particular people. And God declares to them and indict them with this statement. And now you call the proud happy. You call the rich blessed and the poor cursed. You call sin as though it's not sin any longer. You call good evil and evil good. Things have changed. And God is bringing this to their understanding. I have not rejected you. I have not cast you out. I am treating you as I would treat a son. Because I could cast you out. I could destroy you. But I have not chosen to do that. Yea, they, they that work wickedness are set up. They that tempt God are even delivered. This is what they're saying. They're, they're, they are indicting God himself. They're saying the wicked is set up. How can the wicked be set up, God? Why are you allowing the wicked to be in control of the situation? Or our country. Why are you allowing the wicked. To be in power. Not only that. Even those that tempt God. Are delivered. Rather than. Be destroyed. So. Lord God. Wickedness on every hand. Our world is falling apart. And somehow. You seem to be helping them. Rather than helping us. Dearly beloved. They were making an indictment against God. 
And any time a people begin to make an indictment against God, they begin to choose and perfect their own Savior. They begin to look outside of God or in a, in a more deceptive manner that they might not be aware of, they are actually beginning to choose their own Savior and the way they think that things ought to be. And this is exactly what the nation of Israel was doing. They were picking their leaders. God was not picking their leaders any longer. But they could not understand that the leaders that they were picking, God, in turn, was allowing it to happen. And in turn, God was the one who was allowing them to put themselves in the position that they were in. But yet they were turning to God and saying, why this is happening? Even with the godly people that is in the land and that are praying faithfully, they are covering themselves with sackcloth and ashes and fasting before the Lord. But yet, the Father was allowing the land to be filled with locusts, allowing their crops to dry up with famine in the land. They could not understand it. So they began to worship false gods and to lift up false gods because they no longer were putting their trust in the living God. And dearly beloved, we need to put our trust in the living God. Yes, there are some things that's not going to go our way. There are some things that's going to happen that we are going to question in our heart and say, God, why? But dearly beloved, we have to realize this, that all things work together for good for those that love the Lord and are called according to His purpose. It doesn't matter how evil it may look. Know this, that when the uh, uh, the brothers of Joseph threw him in that pit and his life was delivered and saved and he ultimately brought them to a place of salvation. Dearly beloved, God is able, our Heavenly Father is able to do what He needs to do. But we must take our hands off the control of what we believe that we are in control of. And that is our lives. And we don't even control our lives. So how do we believe that somehow as a believer we're going to control outside of our lives? It will not happen, dearly beloved. But remember, we are the Jews of the Lord. Then the Word of God says in the 16th verse, then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. Now remember, the believers spoke to whom? They didn't speak out into the world, trying to change the world. Listen what they said, dearly beloved. Listen to the word of God. If you don't hear me, listen to what the word of God said. Then they that feared the Lord spoke. They began to speak. And what did they do? They spoke often one to another. Not to the world, but one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. Because believers were speaking to one another. Rather than trying to change society, they spoke to one another. And look what the Word of God says. And the Lord hearkened and he heard it. Glory be to God. Were they speaking to the Lord? Were they calling out to the Lord? Was they desiring the Lord? Did they do put sackcloth and ashes upon themselves and call upon the Lord? No, dearly beloved. They were simply getting 
alone together. And God heard them. But what we are doing today are dividing the camps. We believe this, you believe that, and we're not going to even talk to one another. Dearly beloved, we are the Jews in the necklace of God. And if we are going to see the Father do anything in the earth, we have to do it because we have come together as believers. Black, white, Chicano, uh, 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 the uh, Asian, the Indians, the Africans. According to God's word, they came together. Not one trying to outwit the other. Not one selling, telling the other, well, this is what I'm going to do and you can do what you want to do because you're wrong and I'm right. No, he said they did this, that they that feared the Lord, not only those who really truly fear the Lord, in truth, spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance was written before him, before the Lord, for them that feared the Lord, them that got together, and that thought upon his name. And they who remained with their thoughts upon his name. Not some false savior. Not some false hope of deliverance. But rather their thoughts was on him. Not on their agenda. But their thoughts was on him and him alone. To their beloved. That's where we need to be as Christians. We can't change the world, nor can we fix the world. We can't change this country, nor can we fix this country. It is up to God Almighty to do it as He say fit. Now, we can be angry about it, but then we have to take it up with God. Amen? We have to take it up personally with God. Not blaming other believers. Not saying that the failing of this nation or the failing of this world is the failing of believers. No, dearly beloved. This is not a believer's world. This is not a believer's kingdom here. It's not the failing of believers that the world is falling apart. It's not the failure of believers. It's prophesied to take place. The only thing the Lord asks you and I to do is get in order with His Word. So that we will not be named about a with those who will ultimately be condemned. Because they have chosen the world's system rather than God's system. Which is not of this world. Look at the Word goes on and say, He wrote uh, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord, them who spoke to one another often, them who uh, respected one another, them who shook hands with one another and recognized that we are in this together regardless if we accept that fact or not. Even though we don't agree with everything, and on every subject, we are brothers and sisters in Christ and we are willing to speak one to another. But there are those who have chosen not to speak. They have chosen to take camps on both sides. They have chosen to take camps rather than speaking, talking, conversing with one another. Dearly beloved, many are saying that this nation is divided. I don't believe that. Not the nation itself. But I believe that believers 
have become divided. And that is what hurts, if it's at all possible, the heart of Jesus who died for believers and who rose again for his children, for his brothers and sisters. And God's children have picked division and strife rather than coming together and conversing with one another. Well, dearly beloved, I want to be one of those who are conversing. I want to be one of those who says, no matter where you stand, one thing is for sure. We stand with the Heavenly Father. And we need to choose Jesus above anybody or anything else. But look at the latter part of this scripture. The 17th verse. And they shall be mine, said the Lord. Those who are conversing with one another. Those who fear me. Those who are focused on me. Those whose thoughts are on me. Look what he says. And they shall be mine. Not all Jews, not all Jerusalem, not all Israel, but those who are doing what I ask them to do. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day. When I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him. Hallelujah. Those who are focused upon him, those who have not left their stead and picking camps, those who have said, it is of the Lord and the Lord alone will I trust. He says to them today, I will be with you. And the final verse is this here. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. Dearly beloved, he promises to give us insight into what is wicked and what is not wicked. And dearly beloved, it takes discernment, not outward appearance, to determine what is wicked, but rather discernment by the Spirit of God that liveth in every born again believer. Dearly beloved, I pray that the Lord bless you in a very powerful way. Our time has come to an end, but dearly beloved, know this, that the Lord loves you and He truly are concerned about you. And join us on Sunday mornings between the hours of 6 and 10 a.m. at 92.7 KZJM or on the World Wide Web at 927KZJM.org where we are sharing the word of God and there is great gospel music being declared uh, throughout the morning. Look, God bless you, dearly beloved, in a very powerful way. And you keep trusting in the Lord and put not your trust in the hands of man. Because, dearly beloved, he will disappoint you every time. Be blessed in the Lord.